<laughs> that was fun. Hello, and welcome everyone to the 11th episode of Inside AMG, where we have arrived at the letter K. Now that is going to be K as in kinematics. Very complex, very technical topic, but also a very interesting one because we're going to be taking a look at kinematics from the perspective of our very own AMG driving simulator. And of course, as usual, we're also going to be having a number of experts. The first one of those experts is going to be AMG's godfather of kinematics, Michael. Hi Felix, how are you doing? Very well indeed, thank you. What are you doing with my simulator cabin there? <laughs> I was taking it for a little spin, but I gotta yeah. say it lacks a bit of engine power. Yeah, that's true, <laughs> but we're gonna give you some more later on. Awesome. Come on in, I've got something prepared for you. Perfect, thanks. Oh, wow. So there it is. Not bad, not yeah. bad. We're very lucky that we got the model here right now. Uh, so absolutely, I, I mean, I do something. recognize this. Yes. This is very, very special stuff, very motorsporty. Um, yeah, what can you tell us about so, the configuration here? Yeah, kinematics are actually about two main things. Keep the tire happy and keep the driver happy. Uh -huh. Concerning the tire, we coordinate how the wheel is moving over bumps, how it is moving forward and backwards. and most importantly, how the camber and toe angles react. Mm -hmm. So toe, camber is how the tire is leaning inside, toe uh, are steering angles. So camber is important because we are leaning outside while cornering and therefore we need to lean the tire inside to have an even tire pressure distribution, that is to get the main out of the grip. So basically, when we're talking about kinematics, we're yes. always focusing on, on this part right here, so to speak, everything that happens between the wheel yeah. and uh, the rest of the yeah, suspension and the body. configuration. Right, okay. exactly. So everything comes together basically because it's the whole connection between wheel and chassis. Um, yeah. and everything the driver feels when driving the car is yeah. translated through all these different parts that we see yes. here. I mean, this this already looks highly complex. Is this? I mean, this is a very special car. We're standing. That's in a front special of here. configuration here. Yeah. Is that is that representative of oh, any road car? Well, the spring dampers inside here is a, is a push rod uh, and a roll heave damper um, system that is not on the normal car that is very motorsport orientated. You see that in DTM or Formula One cars, a little bit smaller, but that's when, what you see when they get it off the hood. Uh, but the rest of it here, it's a very special five link uh, configuration. Normally on sporty cars, you have quite often a double wishbone uh, suspension, but we decided to have a five link suspension on there to have better adjustability of kinematics and how the whole car behaves. Five links, so we, because we got five different components. Exactly, that, that we got together. two top links here. Uh -huh. uh, we got the bottom links, which take uh, over the main force. That is mainly to guide the wheel in the right direction. And we got the fifth link, which is the toe link, which mm -hmm. defines, first of all, how much you steer and how much you move that whole thing around. I think I believe I heard about the five-link configuration for the first time when the W201 was introduced. I mean, of course, I wasn't there for that. Yeah, that in was 1982, but... Exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the five-link configuration is more or less the queen of uh, suspensions. That uh -huh. was, as you rightly said, uh, introduced with the 201 on the rear axle uh -huh. and therefore taken over to all the bigger Mercedes cars, uh, the E-Class, the S-Class, and is more or less the standard for, for the best configuration you can have. Was it a big challenge to, or is it a challenge to transfer this configuration from the rear axle to the front axle? Oh yeah, actually that was a big challenge because you, as you see, they are all bent in all sorts of ways. Uh, there's not a lot of package within the wheel mm -hmm. and it is moving as well on the rear axle. You always got it in, in one line. Mm -hmm. So it is actually quite a challenge to get the kinematics right, to get the package right, to have a stiff configuration. Um, that is quite a challenge. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you achieve sort of, I mean, this is a very, like we said, a very, a very motorsporty oriented yes. car. How do you achieve a very broad range between comfort and, and, and sportiness that we have in our yeah. cars? 
Well, we, we have our targets which we want to achieve, like for example, toe change and so on. And obviously it's always, as you said, we need to uh, move things around and get the best fit for our cars. All our configurations are differently mm. uh, in all our cars and all, they all differ from the standard Mercedes. Um, what, what we do is like, I said we look at the positioning of the wheel over deflection. That's what we do by moving these points uh, forward, backwards, up and down. Mm -hmm. um, these characteristics are very sensitive to uh, moving them around. For example, the toe link, if you move it up one millimeter, that actually is feelable. Whoa, okay. So it is about <laughs> a lot of precise men as well for getting it to the customer in the production car. So this is completely bespoke for every car, the whole geometrical arrangement is bespoke and yes. important to note, it is specific on every AMG car as well. Absolutely. To the Mercedes. Absolutely. And that even is, like wow. in between the C-Class for example, the C-43 got a different configuration, different bushing settings than the C-63. That's I think something that many people overlook that yes. a lot of work goes into this part of the car and not just yeah. the engine when there is an AMG badge on the car. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Wow. I was talking about uh, the second thing which we actually take care of, it's uh, how the whole forces get transformed to the body. Mm -hmm. uh, so therefore we make sure it, it gets in, in the right parts and the other thing that more or less defines uh, how much the car is rolling, how much it's pitching and under braking mm -hmm. or pitching under acceleration. So we move them around, get the best fit, uh, get the right forces into parts uh, to later on uh, introduce defined uh, deformations in our bushings and in the parts to get some additional uh, elastic kinematics, mm -hmm. uh, toe angles, camber angles. So how long does it take you guys to come up with a configuration like that for a car? Oh well that's, uh, that's quite a task. So normally um, it takes us between three and four months I would say to get it all together, get the right positions, uh, make them uh, work with the package as well. As you see, there's not a lot of space. We got the brakes uh, in mm. there, we got the steering there, we got the side shaft in there. So it's actually quite a tight package in there. And to get it all right in there, we, we need to closely work together with our designers and make sure it's all working together. And after we fixed all the connecting points, we are working on the parts and make sure they have the right stiffness. But I think Sebastian's gonna tell you a bit more about that later on. Cool, cool. Sounds awesome. Very nice. So, I mean, back in the in the G episode, we were at the green hell, of yes. course, taking a closer look at yes. how these things get tested on the racetrack. But everything we're talking about is happening in advance or in co close correlation with those yes. colleagues at the racetrack. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. We're working constantly together. So you met Marcus, you met uh, Tom uh, mm -hmm. working on the elastic kinematics. So we prepare the settings they have to test or they they're going to test, they give us feedback uh, from the test track. And it's always, as you mentioned earlier, quite, quite a task to get all the different characteristics together. Yeah. So it's quite a task. So we have like two, 300 characteristics we have follow, different curves, and to get the best fit for a car, that's quite a task. How do you work with these characteristics? Do you put them in some sort of mathematical models that you calculate or do you put it just in the simulator that we're yeah. going to be taking a look at later on? Yeah, um, well actually we start with a basic kinematics model and, and yet yeah, just make it more scientific later on. Oh. We have a MBS model, so multi-body simulation it's called. So all these different parts are replaced by a model on its own and that gives us uh, the information how much they're moving, how much they're deform deforming the parts. When we have this characteristic data, obviously we got some experience where we want to be and where we think uh, it's best. Then we have a whole vehicle dynamic simulation where the car is driven around by a synthetic controller. And then if we're happy with that, we take it to the simulator because that's the perfect tool for us. We can get the test drivers on, uh, in there, which are driving the car later on. We can drive it ourselves and we can give it to the management. Yet just form a target where we want to be later on in the ready car or in the finished car and just have a whole flow of, of just like working together as, as a team. Wow. We talked a little bit about elastic kinematics. Yes. That we're going to be taking a closer look at that with yes. Sebastian. Yeah, exactly. Sebastian is over there waiting right. for us and let's, he's got something prepared. Let's go and meet him. 
Oh, that track really is a roller coaster. Little so, Bahadur breaking, exactly. Yep. so crazy. Oh, hi guys. Hi, Sebastian. Hello there. Hi guys. Hi, <laughs> hey, there. How's it going? I'm waiting for you. Very good, thanks. And you? Very well indeed. I can tell you something about the last two kinematics. So let's go. Uh, I have something prepared for you. Awesome, okay. So um, when we talk about kinematics, we mainly focus uh, on the axle as how it moves upwards and downwards and we regard it mostly as uh, all the parts are stiff but it doesn't happen in reality mm -hmm. all the parts are deforming and we have in the suspension these uh, rubber bushings that ah. we use to decouple all the harshness that comes from the street uh, from the road through the wheel through the suspension to the chassis and we have everything modeled here uh, in our multi-body system. So between, behind this, this little rubber part, there is actually a mathematical model. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there's also mathematical models from, from all these uh, parts. Mm -hmm. um, uh, these are finite element uh, parts that we place inside so we can see how it, everything oh, wow. uh, deforms. When we have, for example, here a lateral load, don't worry, these deformations are amplified ah, okay. so we can see them. Uh, we uh, make uh, pretty stiff your axles. Okay, so it doesn't move that much in the in the it doesn't, in the but actual it helps car. To see because we use such images to study what what's really going on. We do really take a look at uh, plots or graphs, but sometimes it's very helpful to see it. Uh, in an animation, how it's everything behaving. So this, for example, this movement right here would occur if I drove through a corner and I'd have a, a sort of a, uh, yep. a, a force going through the tire from me being able to go through the corner very fast. And then we'd see this deflection here. Exactly. And what, what you can see here very good is we, should, we have here a lateral force that's mm -hmm. coming from, from the cornering force on the tire. And, and you see that the camera angle is uh, mm -hmm. being reduced through this force. And that's what we are trying to reduce uh, at a minimum. Ah, okay. Yeah, because in that uh, case, we are losing grip. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, on the kinematic side, you try to gain camber when, when the wheels goes up. And that's what you try to do when you define your, your, your kinematics goals. And then you, you go to the street and because of all these compliances, you are losing camber again. And we study, we study what do we need to do, where do we have to stiffen up in order to reduce this camber angle and also the, the toe behavior. And here's <laughs> how do we take a look at, at it uh, thoroughly. Uh -huh. um, when we run these simulations, we take a look at, at comfort. Uh, we take a look at what happens when we have uh, forces going forth and backwards. So uh, the drive forces and the braking forces. And here uh, we see what happens when we have lateral forces. Um, so if we go, uh, if we start here on the comfort side, we are trying to see that in this direction we have enough movement mm -hmm. of the axle mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, in the in the longitudinal direction because when when you hit something on the road it will deflect the tire in, and the suspension in that direction and it feels more comfortable if, mm -hmm. if you are very stiff here then all the harness will come through the chassis then we take a look at what happens with the toe angle the direction of the wheel when we have driving forces and braking forces. This is very important. We are talking about here of uh, very small uh, deviations in, in angle. We are talking about tenth of mm -hmm. degrees. And these are very, very important because the tire is very sensitive to that. And uh, professional drivers feel everything. Mm -hmm. Every tenth is, is felt. These changes in direction um, can upset the car or make it more stable. And that's with, 
what we try to tune up here. The, the color always indicates the, the level of stiffness that you have exactly. in the part. The, the color schema is the level of stiffness that we have in every bushing. Uh -huh. And every straight that you see here, it's one of the five links. That ah, we okay. So we know that when we touch this, uh, this link from a very stiff to, to very soft, we are ch making a change in this direction and we change uh, that much uh, when we break and that much when we have a trying force okay. and it's exactly the same here so uh, this is for example this the spring link you see that it has a lot of influence and what is very important and it's very related to the kinematics is that the directions of all these straights mm -hmm. come from the kinematic. The kinematic itself defines in which direction or which link is working under which forces and what is changing. Ah. And the most important part for us is here grip. Mm -hmm. uh, we are trying to reduce this camber loss. So in that case you are seeing that the baseline variant that we are taking a look at is, is here. You are we look at uh, camber angle and toe changes and for example you can see here this is the camber link mm -hmm. and it's most the, the, the part that's most responsible for the camber change mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. because uh, the the axis goes in that in direction exactly along in that direction yeah, okay. and here for example we have the, the spring link and here the toe link mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. see the toe link are, works mostly in, in the toe direction. Oh, I think uh, I get the hang of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that's very, very interesting because uh, when the driver uh, comes and gives us feedback about how the car is behaving and he tells us uh, where we are losing too much camera maybe, we take a look which of the components we can, we can tune in and which influence does it have in all other uh, characteristics of the, of the axis. But you because also have to... Here, here, here and here. You also have to translate the feedback that the driver gives you into the model first, yeah. because I, I can imagine that the driver probably can tell you, well, in terms of this diagram, diagram what, what, what yeah. has to change about the handling well, of the car. You have to try to interpret what, uh, what's going on. Um, sometimes we can make measurements on the mm -hmm. car and we see what happens and then we have to translate it here. And what's very, very helpful is that we now have the, the driving simulator, so we can make changes here, uh, put the driver in there and tell them, okay, is that what we are looking for? Ah, okay. And you get immediately feedback about it. So that makes me very, very curious about that driving simulator. Would uh, you like to see it? Of course I okay. would. <laughs> Come with me. <laughs> We this are looking here, Jan, and she will explain you everything what's going on in here. What is all that stuff? What you see here is um, basically the, the head of our simulator where we can control everything. So it starts from building models fr uh, from different sources together and um, attaching them to our self-developed, uh, for example, engine models or so on. Uh -huh. Then we can take everything, compile it onto a special uh, real-time machine for that, where this uh, model then will run in a real-time environment. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So that uh, we can make sure that every time step takes exactly as long as the real-time. We have a couple of PCs here where we can watch everything which goes on. So uh, we have the, the real-time machine here where we can check everything which goes in and out of the car. So mm -hmm. like. Uh, for ECUs and um, driver inputs and so on. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. can even see all the settings he, he adjusted on steering wheel, for example, or drive modes and so on. Uh, yeah, I recognize those. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then for, for sure we, have, uh, we can watch our driver, what's happening, and if he's feeling fine or if there is any, any issue. And there we have our real-time telemetry, so we can have even more channels to check. So while we are driving, we can, for example, wow. look at tire temperatures or everything, basically. I gotta say though, it's it's pretty dark in there. I can only kind of see what's going on. I gotta take a close, gotta take a closer look at this. <laughs> wow, it's basically just a giant movie theater with a car in it. 
That is impressive. Well, the question is if you don't have to jump in. Can I? Could you like to give me a drive? Of course I would. Let's go for it. Awesome. We have the VI grade 250 here, mm -hmm. uh, five on five meters of okay. uh, travel potential. That steel plate, it's actually two parts uh, to fix together. Each part weighs about 14 and a half tons. 14 and a half tons? Yes, so it was quite a task to get them in here. In these black boxes, uh, there are magnets actually in there pulling it down. And then we got air pressure pushing it up again. So we got a very precise even gap and it's pretty much uh, zero friction. So without these actuators, you could actually push it around. Wow. <laughs> but that's not everything. We got this laterally 1.2 G, but we got these six actuators, this hexapod, which actually gives us the possibility to move up and down, mm -hmm. to pitch, mm -hmm. to roll. And there we can add another three and a half G uh, acceleration and that up to a very high frequency of 25 30 oh hertz so it's actually moving quite a lot that Whoa. thing that is that is really impressive yeah how much does one of those things cost like uh, the whole setup well i um, can't you tell the exact numbers but it's uh, around four million okay yeah definitely too much for my budget but yes i, I gotta say i mean this really makes everybody who's passionate about about gaming very yeah. very jealous so if you got a lot of money that's the simulator yeah. to go for very very um, serious business on top Crazy. we have a cabin that is our x1 uh, bug mm. so that's what we use for developing the x1 with all the ecus in there but we can actually use it for all the cars we are developing. So ah, we could okay. actually give you the physics of a G model, mm -hmm. we experienced that already, or a GT <laughs> or everything. So that we are not limited there. It's just about the interior feel. I That's gotta it. say, nervousness is rising. Yeah, so you wanna have a go? I think you learned how to drive in the G class. You've been on the Nordschleife with Markus. So have a go. And normally you get a challenge as well. I do. So have you ever heard about motion sickness? <laughs> uh, Some people yeah. tend, the first few times they are in the simulator because we are so close to reality. So your body <laughs> thinks you're in real, in the real car, but not everything is quite real. So some people get sick after a while. So your task is go around the Nordschleife, do a lap and don't fill up that bag. I'll try to not fill it up, by, but not by missing it, but by actually keeping everything inside me yes, that is that in there. Um, yeah, this, uh, thank you very much. I yeah, appreciate that, uh, taking care of me like that. But um, yeah, uh, I hope I'll not ruin your precious, yeah, your precious machine. Yeah, you right. <laughs> it's going to be fun. <laughs> Can, uh, you can speak to me in the control room and um, then you can put on your seatbelt and you're ready to go. Awesome. It's, it's go time then. I hope I haven't promised too much. Um, yeah, I'd say let's go for it. What can go wrong, right? <laughs> Guys must be thinking I'm driving like a madman, but this is actually a lot harder than it looks. So I'm trying to channel my inner Marcus Hofbauer and try to remember what he told me about all these different sections. Now we go for Hatzenbach section. This is Quiddelbach, Flugplatz and Schwedenkreuz. Steep uphill section. This was the famous Brünchen. And now we go to Pflanzgarten 1 and 2. But <laughs> it's definitely very different when you're sitting in this thing and trying to remember where all the different breaking points and turning points are. Oh, oh. 
Getting a bit sketchy under braking here. Really not that easy, I gotta say. But it is a whole lot of fun. And it actually requires quite a bit of guts to go through the corners because you know what happens when it all goes wrong. Depending where you go off, you can third get quite a shake. So the platform is capable of giving you a three and a half point uh, That is pretty rough. Crazy how precise everything feels. Like, the car does exactly what I want it to do. Oh, now I'm going for the bumpy right into the carousel. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> that was fun. I think I need a little break from this because you're working up quite a sweat in this box here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not too bad. I want to press pause. Yes, yes, please. Wow. There really is no dignified way of getting out of that thing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what wow. an experience that is. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> I did enjoy it. Absolutely crazy machine. Yeah. Unbelievable, unbelievable what that thing can do. Wow, wow. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm lost for words and my knees are quite shaky, I gotta, yeah, I I gotta admit. You, you understand that we can actually use it to set up kinematics yeah. and to, to work on that. Obviously it takes a while to get used to and to be there, but you did really good. Oh, thank you, thank you. I tried to go slow and steady, but yeah. um, also at slow speeds you can still, you can feel very exactly what the car is doing and when yes. the tail is going to step out and how everything feels and moves and yeah. it's it's really quite impressive i gotta say thank you so much for having us here thank I mean, you for being here <laughs> this is this is a top exclusive experience and i really yeah. appreciate that um thank you so much for letting me take it for a spin and and explaining everything sure hope you had fun <laughs> that was that was really cool um definitely learned a lot today again yeah yeah so there you have it folks Kinematics, definitely a very complex topic, very technical topic. We try to break it down as easily as possible um, to make it digestible. Um, a very interesting topic though, to understand how our cars handle and why they handle the way they do. And driving this thing, that was just another life-changing experience, I gotta say. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still shaking and sweating. So if you guys liked what you've seen at home, definitely drop us a like, subscribe to the channel, leave us a comment what you would like us to shoot next. And uh, yeah, most importantly, this one stayed empty today. <laughs> um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.